Hi guys, welcome back to Petrol Zone. Today we're going to be reviewing the Mini Cooper S 2014 model. Stay tuned, I'll tell you what I think. So first things first, looks. I think these things look fantastic. Especially with the LED headlights and stuff. Must have option. Don't buy one without the LEDs. They are brilliant. So it's full LED, it's got a daytime running light, LED dipped beam and main beam. It's also got LED fog lights. The indicators aren't LED though. They're just normal. Looks good with a black stripe on it. 17 inch wheels are standard. Actually, they're not as standard, are they? I think the 16s are standard. 17 Coopers are optional and John Cooper Works has 18s on it. The famous kind of upright windscreen, which likes to attract flies. This is the three door model. I think, um, I think it looks better in three door. I think the five door looks a bit odd. It's got the John Cooper Works spoiler on this one. The signature twin exhaust in the center. The newer model has got the 18 uh, year. The rear lights, it must just be a I don't know if it's an option or standard, but the rear lights look like Union Jack flags, which I think is pretty cool. So it's keyless ignition. I'm not sure if that's an option too. So basically all I do is, there's a button on the handlebar just there. The key's in my pocket, I just walk up and press the button. Then I can open the door and then just hop in and start it. And to start it, there's a button on the centre of the dash, the little red one there, that turns ignition on and off and starts the engine. So this one's got a John Cooper Works steering wheel, it's also got the John Cooper Works written in there, it's not actually John Cooper Works, it's just got a couple of options from it. Fantastic seats, I absolutely love the seats, they hold you in place brilliantly, they're really comfortable. Um, the adjustments are not electric though. The lump, the, uh, this comes out and in as well. This is the automatic paddle shift automatic version. We've got paddles behind the steering wheel as you can see, plus and minus up and down the gears. They, you, they work all the time. I'll tell you more about that in a bit when we get to drive it. Inside they're lovely places to be, really really good, well designed. This one's got the infotainment system. Uh, a must-have, I think. Lots of options. You get the uh, the little wheel to control it with in there. We've got head-up display on this as well. See the button on the far right is to turn the head-up display on and off. And this is what it does. Not sure if you can see it there in there. Just about the speed on it. There we go. Now you can see it. So we're just saying 0 miles an hour. So that will be your line of view. Pretty good actually. Takes a bit of getting used to. 
this has got heated screen as, as well it's got quite a few options I think they're worth um, they're worth optioning up definitely we have the Harman Kardon sound system in this one as well it's got the additional speakers on the uh, A pillars there so the boot well minis aren't really renowned for big boots are they and this one is no exception pretty small it's, um, it's got a extendable boot floor though you can lift this up and there's a bit more space underneath for storing oil etc <laughs> as I've done uh, and that will lock in place too which is pretty good so it just make it slightly bigger and you can fold the back seats down and um, not completely flat There is then a lip unfortunately, but that gives you a bit more space, it's actually not bad size then. Uh, you can get like fridges and stuff like that in there, which is, uh, which is pretty good going. And one other point to mention is there is no spare wheel. All you get is a little inflation, a tyre inflation device, like a foam thing compressor in there see the little bottle at the top now this seems to be the case in all Cooper S's I assume to save weight <coughs> here it is as usual with modern engines covered in plastic 2 litre turbo, 192 horsepower. But look what we have here. Semi-active front dampers. Which can be adjusted with the different modes. So as you can imagine, driving a Mini Cooper S isn't short on fun. These things are fantastic. Even the non-Cooper S is brilliant to drive. But the S just takes it one stage further. The seating position is fantastic. The steering wheel is nice and small in your hand. This has actually got the um, John Cooper S steering wheel. It makes it a little bit thicker. Slightly nicer design. But even the standard one's nice as well, it's just a great sort of sense of occasion when you get in here. The dashboard's brilliant, the, um, the controls are at your fingertips. There are, there are some, it takes a little bit of time to get used to everything. It's not, you know, most cars you can jump in and you can straight away you know where that, what that button does and that button does. In the minis, you don't. <laughs> you basically get in, go, oh, well, where's the window switch? Um, luckily on this new model, They've moved the window switches to the um, door side um, handle, grab handle. So it's just a standard position, which is good. But on the old previous model, it was in the dashboard in the middle. Now I'm replaced with, I've got heads up display button, which is good, that, a little bit confusing. It takes some getting used to the head up display. I've got all the usual things, the start stops in the middle. Um, it's actually got the auto start stop function on this, which I find highly annoying. Um, and it's one of the first things I switch off when I uh, when I get in the car. The sound the car makes is fantastic as well. Um, in the sport mode, the exhaust does the uh, the pops and bangs as you back off. Uh, when you change gear, it does a uh, pop out the back too. It's a fantastic sort of sense of occasion don't think it does that in the manual version so that brings me on to the manual versus automatic discussion I tried both of them and uh, I preferred the automatic most definitely I don't deny that the manuals got a little bit more control um, you know if that's your thing but nowadays automatics are so good this is the standard automatics not a dual clutch gearbox has got paddle shifters on it which are brilliant uh, and they work all the time 
So I'm just sat in standard D mode at the moment on my way to work. Um, I'm just cruising along. If I just want to change down a gear, I just pull the left hand paddle, it goes down a gear. I pull the right one, it goes up a gear. That's now just put me into manual mode. However, if I put my foot back on the accelerator within five seconds, um, it will go into drive again and then just change gear itself. But it's really useful if you're kind of going into a corner too fast um, and you want to just knock it down a gear and kind of enjoy the corner, you just pull the button and off you go. Uh, and then once you finish the corner, you come out of it, you can change up a gear if you want and then it'll just move itself to drive automatically. And that's a really good idea. On a lot of um, manual kind of autos, in the manual mode, you have to move it over to drive and sport and manual mode yourself. Whereas this, like I say, the paddle is just working all the time. So I think that's brilliant. The other downside of the um, manual version versus automatic is the stiffness of the clutch. Now I don't know if that's if you're, if you're bothered about that. If you're driving it every day in traffic, it makes a huge difference, which is the reason why myself and my girlfriend had to go for the automatic. Plus they're cool anyway. But the clutch is so stiff, uh, and it was literally a, a, a sale, a deal breaker for me. Um, I found a, the perfect car with all the options I wanted. It was manual. I went and drove it, and I just could not get on with the clutch. I couldn't make the gear changes smooth, I couldn't pull off nicely, it was just sort of on off like this, it, uh, I just had to say to the guy, I'm really sorry but I love your car but I, I need to get an automatic one, so we did. So that's something to consider if you uh, if you are in the same, if you're having the same debate, do I go auto, do I go manual, that's something to, uh, to consider. Uh, to be honest, if you are in that situation and you're not sure, I would say go auto because it does everything the manual does, plus more. Um, you know, you can have it in drive. You've got, you've got various options with it. You can have standard drive mode. You can put it into sports gearbox mode so it will change down a bit earlier. It will rev out a little longer. Then you can press the paddles whenever you want to. If you're in sport mode and you press the paddles, it will go into full manual mode and just stay in manual mode. So you've literally got complete control. That's fantastic. Uh, it does the usual sport mode, does all the, the, the exhaust blips and stuff like that, which is cool. Well, one thing about the manual which was good though, is when you change down a gear in the manual, um, as soon as you um, move into that down down gear physically, the car automatically rev matches for you, which is a really cool function. Um, not many manual cars do that. Obviously in the auto one, it does that anyway for you. But um, yeah, it's worth this. Go and drive them both but I think the, uh, the auto is the better one to have. So the seating position is fantastic. The seats are fantastic. They really grip you in place. Um, they're quite well adjusted. You, you know, you've got quite a few adjustments in them. The handling of these things is fantastic. The, the grip in the corners, the lack of body roll, the, the um, speed with which it can turn in is fantastic. I mean, minis have always been brilliant handlers and, and they've certainly kept that in this new model. And I love it for that. The ride quality, uh, there's been quite a few reports about that. It is pretty hard, I have to admit. Um, we've got also an X5 and they're pretty harsh in ride quality, but when you jump from the Mini to the X5, the X5 is like being in a cosseting Land Rover or something like that. It's so soft in comparison to this. On a bumpy, nasty road surface, it's a little bit kind of bone jarring. You're like, oh no. And you find yourself, um, I mean, there was a, a good example. I've just sort of gone over a little bit of a manhole cover and it was thump. Uh, you find yourself dodging things in the road. So <laughs> when you're driving, you should be looking quite far ahead as you know but when you've got a car that's hard on suspension you end up you end up kind of looking just in front of the bonnet and picking out the the imperfections in the road and missing them out which is a little bit detracts from the driving experience a little bit in my opinion Come on, one of you is going to let me out surely i'm in a lovely orange mini thanks that's the other difference with the uh, cars like this people like them don't they so you're in you're in traffic you want to pull out 
if I'm in the X5, everyone hates me. <laughs> if I'm in this, they just, yeah, oh, cool, there's a Mini, let's let him out. I, maybe I'm making that up, but I, there definitely seems to be a difference. So it's got different driving modes on it. You've got sport, you've got kind of normal, and then you've got an eco mode. The eco mode I just find completely pointless. It really, really pulls back the throttle response. Um, it makes the gear changes really sluggish. I think the idea is obviously it makes it more economical. Uh, it gives you like a gauge on the dashboard of how um, of how much it's saving you fuel, how many extra miles you're getting out of the tank. But it, it's very negligible difference, really. Um, let's face it, the car is pretty good on fuel. I mean, we're averaging about 39 mpg, um, most kind of normal driving, mixture of everything, which is pretty good, really, for a two litre turbo. Um, but if you put it into eco mode and do like a long journey, it doesn't really make that much difference. It just makes the car a little bit more annoying. It like makes the throttle response too poor. And you know, if you just want to nip and overtake a car, you can't. So I don't bother using it. I use normal mode for normal driving, and then if I'm in the mood and I want a bit of sportiness, I put it in sport mode. So the difference in sport mode is obviously the throttle response is the most obvious. As soon as you press into sport, I'll do that now. It knocks itself down a gear um, and it kind of accelerates because the position you have the throttle suddenly gives it a little bit more acceleration because obviously that's now changed the calibration of the throttle position. It's a uh, drive by wire throttle on these. You get more kind of exhaust noise. I don't know if they've done anything as a, a flap or something, but I think it's more in the ECU. So when you back off, you get popping at higher revs and things like that. You don't get in that in the normal mode. So they must um, just program the ECU to throw a bit more fuel in there or something. Um, the steering also uh, gets heavier. That's something they change with the, the sport mode to normal mode. You can you can tell a big difference in the steering. Um, the problem with, for me is I want a user mode. I want to be able to have lighter steering but better throttle response, or heavier steering and lighter throttle response, and, and ha you have those changes. The third thing that it does, um, which is so much more subtle, is it would appear to have some form of uh, electronic damping. And as you can see, there are wires going to the top of the dampers. Now I've tried my hardest to, to compare the two, and there is a subtle difference in sport mode. It does feel a little bit more jittery compared to normal mode. So it's definitely doing something, but it really is only just noticeable. Handling wise, again, I don't think that I can really tell the difference. It, it, it's brilliant in every um, mode you put it in the handling. I'm going to come back out of the sport mode now because the downside of sport mode is that that extra throttle response when you're in traffic makes it a bit too sort of on off and because you haven't got a clutch you can't kind of moderate that as easily so I find sport modes a bit too much in traffic Even in normal mode, it can be quite, in traffic, it can be quite on-off, quite fierce. It's not, it is a town car effectively, but it's not that good at town work, I don't think. The suspension is quite stiff, although for normal roads, normal driving, it's, it's perfectly you know, manageable. You can live with it, no issues. The brakes, so they're not that good, I don't think. They're a bit grabby. Um, they're not that. When you're really pressing on, they don't really pull you up as well as you know. There's not that much pedal feel. They don't. They're not that strong. They do the job, but I think the brakes could be better. The other thing is these. It's a two-litre turbo. Standard output on this model is 192 brake horsepower, which is not bad. 
but let's face it, in modern cars, So 